Okay, this first one says, two customers at the rave movie theater go to the snack bar before the movie. Their receipts are shown below. Write and solve a system of equations to find the cost of a large popcorn and a small drink. So if we look, and on your extra sheet of paper here, what are the two things that these people bought that were in common? Small drinks and popcorn. Does it say how much each one of them are? No. So that's what we need to find out. So I need to make a variable. You have to define your variables first. So I've got popcorn and I've got drinks. We can use X and Y, but a lot of times they'll use different letters. So I'm going to use P is going to equal the popcorn. D is going to equal the drinks. Okay, the first customer right here, they bought three popcorns. So three times P, three times the popcorn, plus two small drinks. Two D equals, how much did he spend? $21. So there's the first equation. The second equation, right here on this customer, two popcorn buckets, two popcorn, plus four small drinks, four drinks equals 22. When they ask you to set up the equations, this is what they're asking you to do. Now, think about the ways that we've learned how to um, solve systems. Looking at this one, what's the easiest way? How is it already set up? Which, which way? Graphing, substitution, or elimination? Elimination. What would I have to do to the top equation in order to make one, the D's disappear? Times 2? It's got to be a negative 2. So I would come over here and I could rewrite negative 2 times 3. So it would become negative 6P, negative 2 times 2, negative 4D, negative 2 times 21. Negative 42. Did I do anything to the bottom one? No. So it's 2P plus 4D equals 22. Now we can go through and solve it like normal. Negative 6 plus 2. Negative 4P. The Ds cancel out. I get negative 20. Divide by negative, not negative, there we go, let's try and, I'm thinking ahead. Divide by negative 4, P equals 5. What was P? P was the popcorn. So popcorn is $5 each. So now choose one of the two equations, it doesn't matter which. If I did 2P plus 4D equals 22, if I know that popcorn is $5, I can put that in here in this equation. Plus 4D equals 22. There we go. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 4D is 22. We would solve it by just subtracting 10 from each side. 4D equals 12. Divide by 4. D equals 3. Okay. We're not going to solve all of these. A lot of this is just trying to figure out how to set it up. Let's look at the next problem. The next problem says a jar contains nickels and dimes. There are 20 coins in the jar. The total value of the coins is $1.40. Write a system of equations to determine how many nickels and dimes there are. Okay, so I want you guys to think about this. When my, with my younger son, I've got, I've got two sons, right? So the younger one, when he was little, he understands it now. But when he was little, he just knew that I was going to, he just wanted some money. Right? He didn't know the difference between pennies and nickels and stuff like that. 
So if I would have handed him money, I would have given him 20 coins and he would have been like, I have 20 monies, right? Come on, y'all know little kids say that. I have 20 monies, okay? Except for Jose's wonderful family. All right, so um, they have 20 monies. So all he knows is that he has nickels and it, he doesn't understand he has nickels and dimes. He just has different coins, right? Now, Jacob, my older one, he knows the difference, right? So how many times do the older brothers will be like, hey, why don't I switch you? I'll give you, you know, like a whole bunch. Or you give me the little ones and I'll give you the small ones, right? No, he wouldn't say that. Would he? He'd say it the other way around. Right. Jacob would try and get the little ones, right? Jacob would try and get the little ones, and he would try and tell Cade, you can get the bigger ones. Look, these are bigger. Because what does Jacob know? He knows that there is value to the money, right? That's where the dollar amounts come in. So first off, there's nickels and dimes. So Cade just knows that the number of nickels plus the number of dimes equals 20. He just knows there's 20 coins. Jacob, on the other hand, knows that there's value. How much is a nickel worth? Five cents. How do you write five cents? Be careful. It is 0 .05. They will try and trick you by just putting by just putting 0.5 for nickels, and that is not right. What is 0 .5? 0 .5 is 50 cents. So you've got to have, it's got to be 0 .05 times the nickels plus 0 0.1 or 0.10, it doesn't matter which, if you have the zero on there or not, times the dimes equals $1.40. Okay? All we're doing right now is we're just going to set it up. If you wanted to solve it, then yes, you would take the top equation and multiply it by something. Right now, we're not going to worry about doing that. So let's look at the next one. It says, Rachel met 24 of her cousins at a family reunion. The male number of, uh, the number of male cousins, M, was six less than twice the number of female cousins. Which system can be used to find the number of male, and, male cousins and female cousins? First off, you know that there is a total of 24. That means that I have M plus F equals 24. Now, these have this. What about C? C says 24 plus F. That doesn't work. But, don't, but you would not eliminate D. These are actually the same things. If I took this equation and I solved it, see how it, F is all by itself? If I wanted to get F by itself, how do I move the M to the other side? I subtract the M to, from each side. So I have F equals 24 minus M. Isn't that the same? Isn't this and what's written in D the same? Yes. So you can't eliminate it just because it's not written 20, M plus F is 24. You have to be careful. I knew this one wasn't right because if I got M by itself, I would subtract F from each side. Now the key is going to be the second equation. It says the number of male cousins, the males, are going to be, now it says six less than, twice the number of female cousins. You have to remember when it says less than, that means that six goes to the end. So it's going to be twice the number of female minus six. Your answer would be D. For this problem. I want you to look at. Number four. And I want you to try and. Write the equation. For number four. All right. On this one it says. 358 tickets were sold. At a basketball game last Friday night. Student tickets were $1.50 and non-student were $3.25. The total profit from ticket sales was $752.25. Write a system of equations to determine the number 
of how many student tickets and non-student tickets were sold. Okay, so the two things we need to first do is define our variables. The two um, tickets were student tickets and non-student. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, I'll do S for student tickets. You could have used any variable. And I'm going to use N for non-student. Well, first off, it says 358 tickets were sold. So I have S plus N equals 358. That's just the tickets. That's how many bodies, how many people were there. Now you need to put the dollar amounts. A lot of times after I define my variables, I go over here and I'm like, student tickets, I just put next to it $1.50 and 325 because there's a whole lot of words in the word problems, and I just match them up. So I know $1.50 times the students plus 325 times the non-student. And that equals $752.25. Then that's all we're going to do right now is just set them up. Did I miss one? What did I miss? Four? Yeah, let's go down here. Oh, there's five. It says, Mrs. Smith bought centerpieces to put on each table at a graduation party. She spent $3.50. There are eight tables, each requiring either, either a candle or a vase. Candles cost $3. Vases cost $4.25. Write a system of equations to determine how many of each type she bought. Okay, well, I know I'm going to make C equal my candles and B equal my vases. I told you a minute ago that I like to put the dollar amounts with it. How much are the candles? How much are the candles? They are three dollars. How much are the vases? Four twenty-five. Please write these two equations. So when you look at this, candles and vases, how many total does she need? How many tables are there? Eight. She needs to have one of those things on each of the eight tables. So either the candles plus the vases is supposed to be eight. Now, wait, something's wrong with this. Well, yeah, there, there would either be, yes, there's either like four candles and four vases or two candles and two vases. But where I'm saying there's a problem, look at the problem. How much did she spend? Is that even possible with what they gave us? No, I would have to change. Let's, um, that number, that would be, have to be something else to make that a possibility. Because you don't have enough money to do that. Because what we'd have to do here is the candles are $3. $3 times the candles plus $4.25 times the vases. Yeah, she only brought one candle, but that doesn't help solve our problem. So this dollar amount would have to be something different. So this actually, this problem's not reasonable, but you would you would take whatever the amount was she spent, and that would actually go right here. Um, this problem is just written incorrectly. All right, let's look at number six. You'll see quite a few of these when they talk about length and width on EOCs and on your tests. The difference between the length and the width of a rectangle is two units. The perimeter is 40 units. Write a system of equations to determine the length and the width of a rectangle. Well, first, we're going to have L equal the length and W equal the width. First off, it says the perimeter. The perimeter is 40 units. What's the formula for perimeter? It's not length times width. Length times width is area. Well, all the sides, what are we doing to all the sides? Adding them up. The formula they're going to use is this. 2 times the length 
plus 2 times the width. And that equals 40. Then the first sentence says, the difference between the length and width of a rectangle is two units. What does difference mean? Subtract. So the length minus the width is going to equal two. The difference between them is two. So you would subtract them. Look at number seven and try and do number seven. On number seven, it says the length of the rectangle is twice the width. The perimeter is 90 centimeters. Which system of equations below will determine the length and the width of the rectangle? Well, the first thing you should look at is this sentence right here that says the length of the rectangle is twice the width. The length of the rectangle is twice the width. Remember, twice means to multiply. So I can look down here. A does not have it because it says L plus 2. This says L plus W is 2. Uh, this one could be it. L equals 2W, that could be. And this one is written backwards, that's not correct. The next sentence, though, says the perimeter is 90 centimeters. What's the formula for perimeter? Length plus length plus width plus width plus width. I can't even talk, okay? Um, but another way, the way they use it on the formula chart, they will say 2 times the length plus 2 times the width that's what they're going to use for perimeter, and that equals 90. So why is D not the right answer? It doesn't, it doesn't have the 2 on there, right? And if you're going quickly on a test, you may miss that and accidentally circle it. You need to make sure and really go through and try and eliminate when you have your test and cross off the ones that it, that it is not. So yes, in this case, the answer is C. Let's look at number 9. It says Vanessa is buying school supplies to prepare for the school year. She has bought two books and a backpack for $26. Each book costs $8 less than the backpack. Holy moly. Okay. Write a system of equations that can be used to find the price of the book and the backpack. Okay. The two things we're talking about, book and backpack. We're going to have to define our variables first. So on your papers, okay, the first thing you do right here is define your variables. And on there, books and back, I'm going to use B. I'm going to use a big B for books. And I'm going to use a little B for backpacks. My point is, is that you don't have to use X and Y all the time. Now, sometimes you might want to, when they're both the same letter, you might want to figure out a different way to use them and what to do. Right here it says she bought two books, so two times the books plus a backpack, and that equals $26. The second one says each book costs $8 less than. That less than is very tricky. So the book, the book is $8 less than the backpack. Which thing is more, the book or the backpack? Okay, so the backpack is, it says the book is $8. Nope, let me do it a different way. All right. The book is $8 less than the backpack. So take the backpack and the less than means we have to subtract the, the six from the end. Whenever it says less than, you have to take that number and move because it's not six, it is so eight. I just made it up. Okay, let's try again. It is minus eight. Thank you. Okay, I was trying to get the focus on the less than. The less than means we need to put it at the end. Okay. 
Let's try the next one. Right now, the question was, is that all you have to do? All you're going to have to do for this standard is just write the systems. Yes, I'll talk about how to solve them in a little bit. Here's the next one. Look at this one. It says Mary's age is five times Joe's age. The sum of their ages is 18. Right? Write a system to determine how old Mary and Joe are. Okay, so we have to make, we have to come up with variables. Well, we have to define our variables. So I'm going to have M equals Mary, or Mary's age. J equals Joe's age. Now, the first sentence says Mary's age is. Mary's age is is equals five times Joe's age. Mary's age equals five times Joe's age. That's my first equation. The second one says the sum of their ages is 18. What does sum, what operation is sum? It is addition. So Mary plus Joe equals 18. Now, this is all right now we have to do, but if this was a problem and I said we needed to solve it, what would be the best way to solve this? Is this Are these equations written so that we should solve it with linear combination, graphing, or substitution? Substitution. Substitution. So what would we do to solve it? Well, we would go, you would take what m equals, and we would put it in here for m. And we would get 5j plus j equals 18. 6j equals 18. How old is Joe? Joe is 3. Well, Mary is 5 times Joe's age. Yeah, so 5 times 3. So Mary is 15. That's how we use substitution in order to solve our systems. The question is, how do you know which one you use for substitution and linear combination? Remember that when both of your equations are written in slope-intercept form, they're both in y equals form, this would be graphing. Because if they're already in y equals form, you can put them directly into the calculator. If they are written to where 1 is in y equals or x equals, and the other one is in standard form, like this. That's when you use substitution. Linear combination, remember, that's going to be when they are both in standard form, right? Because then you would multiply by something and be able to eliminate. These, if they're both in standard form, this is when you use elimination or linear combination. When one is written in standard form and the other one is x equals or y equals, that's substitution. Okay? Let's go down. Right now, I want you to try and do number 11. Write the system and figure out their age. Do that now, please. On number 11, it says the sum of the two sisters' ages is 32. The difference in their ages is 4. The problem is it doesn't give you names, right, when you're trying to figure out which one is what. But if, if they're difference, difference means to subtract, right? If their difference is four, that means one of them is older and one of them is younger, right? They're not the same age. They're not twins. So I've, I, what I did was I made, I actually used X and Y. I did X being the older sister. And Y being the younger sister. Is that the only way you can do it? No. So it says that the sum of their ages is 32. That means X plus Y equals 32. The difference of their ages is 4. So the older sister minus the younger sister is 4. Now, looking at that set up, what's the best way to solve it? By what? Elimination. 
Because look, if I put them together right away, what letter cancels out? The Y's do. And I get 2X equals 36. Divide by 2. What's X equal? Um, 18? So if the old, so if X is 18 plus Y equals 32, subtract 18 from each side, Y equals, uh, what is that? Be 14, right? So the older sister is 18, the younger sister is 14. Let's look at number 12. Number 12 says, in December, Yvonne sells five times as many cars as Pablo sells. Together, they sold 24 cars. How many cars did each sell? All right, so I'm going to have Y equals Yvonne and P equals Pablo. First, it says, together, they sold 24 cars. So, together, they sold 24 cars. So, I have X plus Y. No, it is not X plus Y. Hello. Yvonne plus Pablo equals 24 cars. The first sentence actually says, Yvonne sells... Five times as many cars as Pablo. Now, how is this set up? Is it, is it bet this, that should be set up as substitution. Go ahead and solve by substitution right now, please. So with the substitution, with the substitution, I'm going to take this 5P and put it into this equation right there. So I have 5P plus P equals 24. Well, let's see, let me move this up. 6P equals 24. How many did Pablo sell? Pablo sold four. So Pablo sold four. Yvonne, sold five times as many as Pablo. So Yvonne sold what? 20. Okay. Looking at the next one, not that, let's see. Okay. Take a minute and try and write the system for 13. Please do that. And let me see, I'll move this up a second. Try and write the equation for 13 and 14. Don't worry about solving it yet. On number 13, it says, Ricky scored six more points than twice as many as Don did. Their combined score was 27 points. Write a system to determine how many points each person scored. First off, I have R for Ricky, D for Don, I always go with the easy and was easiest one first. It says their combined score was 27 points. Well, Ricky plus Don equals 27. That's one of them. The other one says Ricky scored. Ricky scored six more points, six more points than twice as many as Don. How does this send it? Uh, how does it lend itself to be able to be solved? By what? By substitution, because on substitution, you would take this here and we would substitute it in here for R, where we would have 6 plus 2D and then write the rest of the equation, plus D equals 27. These Ds go together, 3D plus 6 equals 27, subtract 6 from each side. 3D equals 21, divide by 3, Dawn scored 7 points. Well, so Ricky 
Well, Ricky is six plus two times D times Don's. So how many did Ricky score? Twenty. The next one. It says Stephanie has 20 coins in her purse. Some are quarters, some are dimes. What is the total value of the coins? Or the total value of the coins is $3.35. Write a system to determine how many quarters and dimes Stephanie has. Well, first I'm going to have Q equals quarters and D equals dimes. It says they have 20 coins in her in the purse. Like with a, when you again when you talk about a little kid and money, they don't when they're real little they only understand they have so many coins. They don't understand there's different values to it. So they know we know that however many quarters we have plus how many dimes we have that means that we have 20 monies. 20 monies. Okay? As you get older, you know that there's value to that. So I know that a quarter is worth 25 cents. So it's 0.25 times the number of quarters plus dimes, 0 0.10 or 0 0.1 times the dimes. And what did they say the value was? 3.35. In this system, can we put it in the calculator? No. It's not really, I mean, you can do substitution. We'd have to move things around. But it's set up to be the best way would be linear combination. Because I would need to multiply my top equation by something. I'd probably multiply it by negative 0.1 and then go through and do the whole thing. But we're not going to do that right now. Because on the test, um, for this part, for this standard, you're only going to have to sit up, set up the equations. Try this one. This is the last one we're going to do here um, in this as a class right here on this one. So on this one, what are the two things it says? Dimes and nickels. So I'm going to have D equals dimes and N equals the nickels. The first equation you should have is that the dimes plus the nickels equals 12. There's 12 coins. Next, you need to put the dollar amounts. Dimes are 0 0.10 plus the nickels. Now, one of the biggest mistakes is this. A nickel is 0 0.05. They are going to try and trick you. Let me finish. Um, but we shouldn't even, we don't even have to put that in there, do we? No. My my problem with the nickels, when we do dollar amounts, so make sure it's 0 0.05. And I was assuming the problem was a certain way, and it's not, because the second equation says there are five more dimes than nickels. And, and this one, you do not have to write their amounts, their values. So there are five more dimes than nickels, and that means the dimes are the nickels plus five, because it said that there was more nickels no more dimes sorry more dimes how does this set up you need to solve this by what by substitution because you would take this and plug it in for d to be able to solve this equation so from here solving it with substitution i would write n plus 5, and then the rest of it in blue, plus n equals 12. n and n, 2n plus 5 is 12. From here, subtract 5 from each side. 2n equals 7. Oh, this isn't going to work out very nicely. Divide by 2. N equals 3.5. Well, that can't happen. 
So I guess when they made this, they just didn't worry about solving it. They wanted you just to set it up. But yes, and, and this is what you would have, but you would know that this couldn't actually possibly happen because we can't have three and a half nickels. So now let's go and let's try and write the equation for number 17. Okay, so on number 17, it says Jeff spent $24.75 to buy 12 flowers for his mother. He bought a combination of roses and daisies. The roses cost $2.50 each and the daisies cost $1.75. Write a system of equations to, deter to determine how many of each type of flower Jeff purchased. First off, what are the two things? You have to define your variables first. What are the two things that we're talking about in this problem? Roses and daisies. You do not have to use X and Y. A lot of times they're going to use the other, they're going to use other letters. So I'm going to use, right now you're going to write down R equals the number of roses. And D is going to equal the number of daisies. Okay. Now. How many total flowers did he buy? 12. So you're going to take the roses plus the daisies, and it's equal to 12. The second bit of information we know is we know how much was spent and how what the cost was. What we don't know is how many he bought. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, it says that, where did it go? 250 is the roses. So 250 times the roses plus a dollar seventy five oh wrong color I want the red a dollar seventy five times the daisies equals they spent twenty four dollars and seventy five cents that's what we're doing by just setting we're going to define our variables and then write our equation if we were going to solve this if we were going to go solve this, would we do it by graphing, substitution, or linear combination? What is the what does it look like the, the easiest way to do right now is? Well, when do you use substitution? When do you use graphing? When do you do use linear combination? Remember that when both of your equations are written in slope-intercept form, this is when we use graphing. Okay, when we have one that one is in x equals or y equals and the other is in standard form, this is substitution because you would take what x equals and put it in for x. If they are both in standard form, This would be linear combination or elimination because you would have to multiply one of your equations by something in order to get rid of it, right? They're both in standard form. So if I go back here and look at this, well, not that one. What? Where'd it go? They're going crazy. All right. If I go down here and look at this, which one of those three would I need to do for this problem? Substitution is one of them in, in R equals or D equals? No. It's got to be linear combination. Like I would multiply one of my equations by maybe negative 250, and that would get my R's away. In one of the other ones, when it's a little bit nicer, we'll, we'll show you a little bit more. Let's look at the next problem. I want you to take a minute and I want you to try and figure out which one of these would be the answer choice for this problem. So looking at this problem, it says the algebra test has 25 problems. Some are worth two point and some are worth three point. The test is worth 60 points total. Which system can be used to determine the number of two point and three point problems on the test? Okay, well, 
first off, I've got X and Y. I know that when you add these two together, because it says the total points is tw or total problems is 25 problems. So I know that if you take all the problems and add them together, it's supposed to equal 25. Well, these have 60 on it. Those don't have anything to do with it. And actually, out of these two, what's happening here? They're, they're subtracting. You don't subtract those. This one, D, will be the answer because you'll take 2 times the 2-point problems plus 3 times the 3-point problems, and that equals 60 points total. Let's look at another one. This one, it says, Victor has twice as much money as Fred. Together, they have $96. Which system of equations below could determine the amount of money Victor and Fred each have? Well, it says one of the things right here says together they each have $96. So that means Victor plus Fred is $96. I have these here. Then the top sentence up there says, oh, wait, uh, there's another one down here. Victor, oh, I can eliminate D because look, it says it's multiplying Victor and Fred. This one might still work. Let me move this up a little bit so I see it in my answer choices. The first sentence says Victor has twice as much money as Fred. Victor has twice. Twice means multiply by two. There's a plus. There's a plus. Can't be that. Your answer should be B. Victor has twice as much money as Fred. So two times Fred gives you Victor. Here's another one. Let's look at another situation. Your school is planning to bring 193 people to a competition to another school. There are eight drivers available for two types of vehicles, school buses and minivans. The school buses seat 51 people each, and the minivans have nine people each. Write a system of equations to determine how many buses and minivans will be needed. The first thing you have to identify is what are the two things they're talking about. So on your paper right here, so you know what to do, you're going to want to write B equals the number of buses. And I'll do M equals the number of minivans. Those are the two things that we're looking for. Now, it says that there are eight drivers available. Eight drivers available. So I can only take eight vehicles. So I'm going to have the buses plus the minivans, and that equals eight. Because that's the total amount of vehicles I can take because that's all the drivers we have. How many does it say that the bus can take? 51. How much can the van take? Nine. All right, so 51 times the number of buses plus nine, that's all that fits in the minivan, times the minivan equals 193 people. On this right here, if I asked you, how could you sub or how could you substitute? Um, how could you solve this system? Would this solve, be solved easier with graphing, linear combination, or elimination? Oh, I said that. I, I said linear combination, which is elimination, substitution, or graphing. And Willie, what did you say? Elimination. Because say if I wanted to, if I wanted to get rid of the M's. What would I multiply that top equation by? The M's. Negative what? Ne negative 9. And then when you did this, you would rewrite it out here as negative 9B minus 5M equals negative 72. I ran out of room here. And then you could rewrite the bottom one and the M's would cancel out. So let's see. What would I do? I'd have negative 9B minus... Minus, why did I say 5? Yeah, I'm having issues here. 
negative 9m equals negative 72. I was more worried about trying to fit it in. m equals negative 72. Then when I put these two equations together, that would give me 42b. These cancel. Um, what is that? That's an 8 and a 1. No, I don't even need to do that. What am I doing? Equals 1. 21. Whew. And then divide by 42, just like we would normally on solving equations. Okay? I'm not worried about that right now because you need to be able to define your variables and set up your equations. But I need you to understand that the reason why we're doing this, you get your equations and then we do it by elimination or substitution in order to solve. Here's this next one. Looking at these equations, it says you have 25 coins that are all nickels and dimes. And it tells us that N is the number of nickels, D is the number of dimes. The value of the coins is $2.05. Which system of equations can be used to find the number of nickels and dimes? Well, first off, if I just had so many coins in my hand, you would just count how many coins there were. So the nickels plus the dimes equals 28. I could just jingle in my hand 28 coins. Well, this says nickels and dimes is 205. That's not right. Um, nickels and dimes, 28. Yes, nickels and dimes, 28. Nickels and dimes, 28. Now, the next thing we have, is we need to put the dollar amounts with it. Nickels are 0 0.05, so I get 0 0.05 times the nickels plus the dimes, 0 0.10 times the dimes, and that equals 205, $2.05. Well, B and D, both of them have numbers, but what don't they have? Decimals, right? Does it, are these decimals? This is five times a nickel. They've, it's got to be five cents. Actually, all of them are, is there an E? I hope there's an E. Nope, there's a problem. What does, what, this hat, and there's not a right answer on this at all. Well, not the, clo not the closest one. I think what they were trying to do is that you would move their decimal point over two places. So, and actually, let me go back a second, because they, they tried to go through and, and trick with what they were doing. What they did was 0 0.05N plus 0 0.10D equals 205. Well, I guess if you looked at it like what they're going to try and do, this one, this one doesn't work because there's not decimals on, on this, and there is in the answers. What they're doing here is they're moving the decimal over two places, so if you move the decimal, that's multiplying by 100 by everything, you move those decimals over, you get 5n plus 10d equals 205, which is kind of tricky on their part. So the answer would be D. Why is it not B? They have 10 times the nickels, and 10 cents is not what the nickel is worth. So your answer should be D.